Hi all, welcome to my tutorial on how to produce an image slider using pure CSS3. I'll just jump in here and show you the end result of what we're going to produce today. As you can see I've set up a simple HTML page and in the center we have an image slider uh, within uh, the screen of an Apple Mac. Okay, let's get some housekeeping out of the way. So you set up your root folder and inside that folder set up a folder called images. Inside images, uh, save yourself 10 uh, images and optimize them for the web using Photoshop or something like that. Okay. So this is what we're aiming for. Um, I'm using Dreamweaver CS6 here. Uh, so you just open up a new file and you set up your your uh, your page. Uh, I have a container div, uh, header div, main div, uh, a frame div that just holds the background image of the Apple Mac, and I have a footer div down there. So if I go to the CSS, I've uh, using an external style sheet here. You can use internal if you want, but it's just as handy. Just target it to your page. So I set the container to 800 pixels wide, margin left, margin right to autos to uh, get it centered and uh, use the background image just to enhance it a wee bit. Same with the header, 100% wide so it's 800 pixels, height 120 pixels and a bit of an image. Um, so the frame, this is the frame of the Apple Mac um, and I've just positioned it uh, using a uh, center and uh, padding. It, this this is all up to you. You'll have to just mess around with it just to get it working right. Um, uh, my main div, which holds the images, uh, is 600 pixels by 400 pixels. Now the reason for this is because this is the size that I made my photographs. So whatever size you make your photographs, make your main div this size as well. I set the margin left to auto and the margin right to auto just to center it and the overflow X which is this way left to right and overflow Y which is up and down set the hidden that basically just hides the, the images when the, the flow out of the div that they go behind it so you don't see it okay um, so this is I'll just show you again so this is what we're aiming for um, so if I just go back to the source code uh, you'll see that I, that I filled uh, the main div just with 10 images. You could use an unordered list here but there's no need for this exercise. Uh, it would probably just give you more control over the images if you wanted to do some transitions on them. Uh, and I've targeted these images with the class called image scroller. So if we go to our CSS page and down to the image scroller class uh, you'll see what we have here. So I'll just explain the code when I'm developing and testing something like this, I like to use um, Chrome. Uh, I always get it working in one browser first, and then uh, I add on the extra bits uh, for the other uh, browsers, so Mozilla, I Internet Explorer, and Opera. So WebKit is the suffix that will work for Safari and Chrome. So uh, the animation name, I just call it my animation, you can call it whatever you want. Uh, the duration is 20 seconds, so that's the length of time it takes to go from one side to the other. Uh, the animation timing function is in out. So that basically means is that once the images get to the end, that they just slow down nicely and easy and then they come back in nice and easy. The iteration count is infinite which means that it runs in a loop and the animation direction is alternate so that it uh, once it gets to the end it just uh, turns around and just goes back the other way. So to save space I've used the shorthand method here for the Mozilla, uh, the Microsoft and the Opera browsers. So these are exactly the same as long as they're in that order. Okay now on to the keyframes. So this keyframes uh, just control points along your uh, animation timeline. Because I'm using 10 images, I've split my keyframes into uh, 10%. So uh, if you were using like four images, you could change this to like 25%, 50%, 75%, and so on, that sort of way. Um, 
So same again uh, for uh, Safari and Chrome. This basically tells the images to go from one side to the other on the x-axis. So uh, like I said, the x-axis goes from left to right. It starts at zero pixels and because my images are 600 pixels wide, I've uh, incremented the the uh, keyframes by this amount. So you just go 600 pixels, 1200, 1800 and so on till you get to the end. I didn't quite go to 6000 pixels and this is just really for aesthetics when it gets to the end that uh, uh, no white space comes up. So you just play around with these numbers till you get it right. Uh, so this is exactly the same for uh, the Mozilla. Um, all you have to do for the uh, Firefox is to just change the suffix here from uh, WebKit to Moz and um, as long as the keyframe name my animation matches the name of this here then it will work okay so there it is again for internet and opera so that's basically it and I'll just refresh that and show you again this is it starting off again so it just loops and runs and it looks like it's running inside this uh, screen of the Mac um, so if you just use your imagination you could change what happens here so okay so there was the easy so if I go back to Dreamweaver I'm not just gonna let you go without showing you how to change the the scroller to run on the y-axis so basically what you have to do is I'll just comment out these keyframe code here so there's four blocks there just comment them out for now go down here and I'd uncomment these parts here just and I'll just control S to save so I've now asked the images to display as a block one on top of the other and I've changed the keyframe it's still got the my animation to do with the image roller up here so it's still still the image roller class but what we have done is basically all we've done is change x to y so y goes up and down and because the images are 400 pixels high I've uh, done the increment by 400 pixels 800 pixels and so on till you get to the end so that's saved I'll just run that let you see how this runs so there you go now the images go up and down. So there you have it. Two iterations of the same animation. Use whichever one suits your application. Thanks for watching. Try it out and enjoy the features of CSS3. Thank you.